obviously I'm sure you're very sympathetic to the way Paul sees that there, there are these deep mysteries in the universe, the way it is so intelligible that, that seems to sort of suggest some, something's going on um, that we, that, that needs, you know, a bigger understanding, a bigger picture maybe to put together than just, just physics alone. And, you know, what, is yeah, that something I, I would you, agree with that. that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that um, what, one of the things that in, in this kind of a discussion, I find it important to emphasize is that our capacity for understanding and, and making sense of things about the world um, is very powerful, but it, it always relies in one way or another on our own constructions in how to represent the subject at hand. So we devise things like laws of physics in order to sometimes extremely well, but still to approximate the predictability of the experience we perceive. And I think that even the, the greatest successes of theoretical physics should be thought of like in the category of, let's say, today's most powerful microscopes, where in order to turn the data that you collect with a raw device into, let's say, the image of the very tiny thing that you're looking at, that there's a huge number of you know, assumptions and, and interlocking kind of implications and calculations that, that turn what you're getting from interacting with the world into a representation that is sensible and, and, and that seems to represent something that is illuminating in a certain way. And, and the reason I think it's important is because what it means is that even our most successful theoretical constructions, you know, general relativity, Newton's laws, what have you, you should think of them as being very accurate and very successful and very valuable, but they're nonetheless a, cho a choice of a medium of representation much like taking a black and white photograph of a rainbow, right? So I could take a black and white photograph of a sky with a rainbow in it, and that could reveal highly accurate information to me about my subject. And yet it's obvious to us that in our choice of that mode of representation, we've eliminated totally from the medium of communication or the, the sort of the, the setting where we're, we're making the... Uh, we're representing the thing, the possibility of seeing other things that also were there if we had just perceived it differently or, or represented it differently. Um, and, and so I, I think what that points to is just the importance of our having humility about the kinds of approaches we can take to making sense of the world. So physics and mathematics is one kind, and we can make tremendous strides in figuring out certain things about the world. There are other things about the world that are not best predicted or, or described or understood in terms of mathematics and physics. Um, and the moment we substitute a limited model of our own construction for a full-blown picture of reality and all that is, uh, that's kind of lifting ourselves uh, too high in some sense and, and, and thinking too much of our own creations. And I mean, I think it's actually quite related in a sense to the, uh, the biblical idea of creating an idol. Um, and, and what the problem or the danger of that is, that it's, it's overly investing authority in your own construction and the work of your own hands. Uh, and so I think that uh, in, in one sense, I completely agree that there's a tremendous amount we, we can and have understood, understood and more that we still can understand with the kind of representation that math and physics allows. Uh, but, but I would argue for a more expansive view of the kinds of languages we need to capture everything that's true about the world.